In this video, I'll be completing my Outer Hebrides road trip as I uncover Barra's hidden gems. In part one of this series, I explored every corner of the Outer Hebrides apart from one magical island. Barra was the missing piece of the puzzle, an island that I'd heard so much about, an island that many people had told me was the best in the Outer Hebrides, an island that I simply had to come back to discover. And people ask me why I love the Outer Hebrides so much, and it's because you can come to places like this. Look at this place. Getting to Barra was a challenge. I was faced with flight cancellations and a tiny plane landing in 60 mile an hour winds on the world's only tidal runway. But eventually, I made it to this magical island. And in this video, I'll be uncovering Barra's hidden gems. I've just arrived in Glasgow and uh, the weather's raining, which might be a bit of a metaphor for my day because I've just heard that the Barra flight that was about to leave at 10 to 9, not the flight I'm getting, I'm getting the one at 1 o'clock. It's just been cancelled, um, presuming it's to do with the weather up on the Outer Hebrides. After a second flight was cancelled, surprisingly my flight was scheduled to take off. After speaking to a barrel local, landing in high winds isn't a problem as they just land in a different direction on the beach. After about an hour and some choppy winds, we landed at the famous Traymore Beach on the Isle of Barra, the only tidal runway in the world. I've just landed on Barra and uh, this is Barra Airport also known as Traymore Big Beach and a couple of times a day this is obviously where the planes land. Now it's blowing 40, 50 mile an hour gusts at the minute which is not ideal but they still managed to land the plane absolutely fine. The flight was really smooth, it took about an hour from Glasgow. So despite me worrying about it being cancelled, we've got here okay. Now if you're wondering why I'm sat in this 1970s uh, retro VW camper van, it's because I'm hiring it for the next two days. I'm actually going to be staying in this camper van. It's called Olive. So if you do want to hire this, I'll put the link in the description. I'm going to give you a full tour in a bit. It's very windy. I'm very excited. I'm just going to formulate a plan of where I'm going to go and what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, this camper van is absolutely sick. So I've actually left the camper van. You can see Barrett Airport behind me. And I'm heading across the sand dunes. You can park at Barra Airport, walk across the sand dunes, and we're heading to Trey East, also known as East Beach. And once I get up and over the dunes, I'm gonna be able to see this beautiful beach. If you want a beach holiday where you're going to get a beach completely to yourself in the middle of August, just come to the Isle of Barra. Look at this place. But Trey East is just absolutely spectacular, like most of the Outer Hebrides beaches. And it's bizarre, I was just recording a little clip for my Instagram and uh, there was a lady walking down to the beach with a few dogs and she instantly recognised me. I find it weird that people recognise who I am. It's not a brag or anything like that. It's strange, but to be in the Outer Hebrides on a beach where there was no one, it's just weird. As you can tell, I'm feeling pretty excited about this trip. I'm only here for two days, like I've said. So I need to figure out how to drive this van so this could go horribly wrong. It doesn't have ABS, it doesn't have uh, power assisted steering. It's only got four gears. So yeah, this could be a challenge. And I would definitely stick around to watch what happens because it could go wrong. It probably will help. not reverse. Oh my god, that steering is so stiff. Oh man. I'm gonna have a little practice on this car park. Driving this is gonna be an adventure in itself. Um, I've never driven anything older than my old Ford Fiesta, which was probably like 2005. So driving an old camper van from back in the 70s is gonna be interesting. Obviously the steering's very stiff. Uh, and the gears are just strange, but uh, I'm not complaining. There can't be many better ways to explore this fabulous island than in this absolutely incredible vehicle. One thing I will say about driving this old beautiful camper is that using the passing places on these islands is not easy. The brakes are not very sharp. The steering obviously isn't anywhere near what I'm used to. What we're getting there, I'm sure as I traverse around this wonderful island, I'm gonna get used to it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, so far it's been a bit tricky, I'm not gonna lie. 
and I'm getting a feeling that I'm going to be holding certain cars and vans up behind me, which I just am. Oh, can't find second. There we go. So the second stop of this Barra trip is actually Allersdale Bay, also known as Seal Bay. I've come across the Jews to try and find them. And even if I don't find seals, it's yet another pristine beach. And the turquoise blue water in this sunlight, I keep going on about it. If you watched my last out of Hebrides video, you'll know I keep going on about it. And it's just remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Just behind, look at that for a little window view. Um, we're on Vatse now, and there are two main beaches that are kind of opposite each other. On the west side, you've got Tre Abba. I don't know how I'm pronouncing it, probably wrong, uh, but that's this one here. This is the famous one that gets all the postcards and the plaudits. But the other one on the other side, which we're gonna see shortly, might just be as good, if not better. But, I mean, look at that. Look at the color of the water, the white sands, the beautiful gyms on the back of it. Imagine living here, that's the thing that I always think. Imagine if you lived on this island. Would you ever get bored of it? I'm not sure. I've made it to the piece of cake, honesty box. Uh, and boy, have they got some stuff for me. Maltese a slice, munchy tray bait, Hinder millionaire. Oh, I've got 10 quid. I need to make it up to a tenner. These look absolutely delicious. All right. Mmm. You know what? <laughs> Sorry, I've got a mouthful. It's everything I thought it would be. And then a little bit more. That is delicious. I'd recommend a stop off if you come in here. I'm going to feed my fat face and have a walk down to this secret beach that seemingly not many people tend to know about. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out in a sec. Just return back to the camper van and there was one bit of crucial information I forgot to tell you about that last beach which is actually called Bagadias. Usually it's packed with these cows that are just here behind me uh, and photos that I've seen of this beach before are just covered in these cows. If you do end up going there there's a high probability that there will be cows on the beach which is pretty unique. I'm gonna go and check them two other beaches out now and by the way, if you're watching this video so far and you think that Barra is just beaches, beaches and beaches, yes there is, but there's more to it than that. And as we continue on this little trip, you'll get to see more of Barra than just beaches. Guys, just leave the van alone. I know it's green, but surely they're not that stupid to think that the green is grass. I don't know. But if you look behind me, where are they? Over there, look, they're just all licking the side of the camper van. So this beach behind me is Trey Share. Now this is the less popular one of the two that I'm about to go and check out. Anything that faces the west on Barra gets these incredible waves off the Atlantic, which make it great for surfing, but not so good for swimming. So I wouldn't recommend swimming here at all. But once again, got it to myself. I could run from that side to that side, which is getting on for a good, three quarters of a mile and not encounter a single person. I mean, it's just pure pristine beach. If this beach was in Cornwall, even on the NC500, it would be one of the best, if not the best beach there. And that's really what is so remarkable about the Outer Hebrides. So I've made my way to tray a bag. I don't know if I'm saying it right again. Similarly to the other beaches, I'd like, I would describe the sand as almost a soft talcum powder. It's really that soft. And now we're on the east side. Um, you can see there's no waves. It'd be quite nice for a little dip. If I was feeling a little bit more brave, 
probably would. Um, I dipped my feet in that secret beach and it was a little bit fresh, let's put it that way. In the four or five hours that I've been on Barra and Battersea, if these beaches haven't sold it to you, then I don't know what will. I mean, just look at them, immaculate. That's the way that I came in. That is literally the way I came in. So how am I gonna get out? Now, before we discover the rest of Barra's hidden gems, I'm gonna take 30 seconds to quickly tell you all about my new Outer Hebrides guidebook, which is now available. It contains all of the Outer Hebrides must-see locations with QR codes and what free words references, making them simple and easy to find. Like all of our books, it's written in a relatable and down-to-earth style, as if me and you were talking over a pint. It contains everything you need to plan your own magical trip, including ferry information, budgeting, itineraries, and it also has the best campsites, B&Bs, hotels, and even free off-grid park-ups. Our guidebooks have been featured in The Guardian's Best of Travel 2024, and have also received thousands of fabulous five-star reviews from travellers just like you. So if you'd like to support the channel, save yourself a load of time, money, and stress, go and get Road Trip Outer Hebrides now for only $16.99, including free track to UK delivery. So head over to my website now or scan the QR code. And a big thank you to everyone watching who's already got my guidebook. Now let's get straight back into the video. So I've made it to my campsite for this evening and I was just chatting to the guy who runs it, a really nice guy called Donald. And they've got such a good setup here. There's two campsites. So this one's Borth camping site. And the one over there is called Wavecrest. And they're both facing this west coast where the sun shortly is about to set. So uh, Olive the camper van is pitched up here. Uh, we've got an electric hookup. Cool little toilet and shower block. Pretty much everything you need to enjoy this absolutely divine landscape. This is what it's all about, guys. Trust me, this is what it's all about. I think I'm going to turn in for the night, to be honest. Great first day. I'll see you in the morning. Just like that, it's magic. So we're on our second morning here on the Isle of Barra, and you could say the weather is a little bit worse for wear compared to yesterday. We had quite a lot of heavy rain overnight, and there is something to be said for looking at some moody clouds over mountains in the Scottish Highlands. And shortly I'm going to begin exploring the rest of the island. Now, because I was in such a mad rush yesterday, I actually managed to cover, I would say, 60 to 70% of the places I wanted to visit. Of course, I didn't spend much time at each of them, which was a shame because some of the beaches, I would have loved to spend half a day just soaking them in. Uh, so this morning I am hoping to climb Hevel, which is the mountain on Barra, the highest one, standing at about 12... 136 feet something like that and then I'm going to follow the east coast all the way back up north to Elo Gary Beach that's going to be my end point today because the campsite I've got booked is right on the top of the island up there I've made the short walk up to the Brevig standing stone now this is the last standing stone in the whole of Barra and it's still shrouded in mystery to this very day um, they're not sure if it was used as some kind of ancient ritual place other people believe that it's a marker for a grave. And the one thing about all of the standing stones that you find across the Outer Hebrides, even in the UK, they seem to be situated in these absolutely magical places where they've got these epic mountain landscapes, vistas across water, all that kind of stuff. I guess the only disappointing thing about this one here in Barra is that this atrocious building, no idea what it is uh, or what it was meant to be, is built literally right next to it. And it kind of spoils the view somewhat. So you've got the standing stone there and how they were allowed to build this, I don't know, but it kind of just ruins the vibe a little bit. But yeah, it's literally took me 10 minutes. I parked in a little grass verge just off the road, uh, big enough for probably a five, six meter camper van. And then I've just walked up the hill and the views up here are spectacular. You've got Hevel in the background, which is what I'm hoping to climb later. As you can see, the top is still covered in cloud. So the views will be non-existent and I'll probably get lost like I just said. So yeah, there we have it, the Brevig Standing Stone. I wouldn't say it was an essential, you've got to come here and see it, uh, but if you've got some spare time, it takes 10, 15 minutes walk to get here, if that. To pass a bit of time until the weather had cleared up, I made the drive to Ardmore to grab a coffee. It's from here that you'll catch the ferry to and from Eriskay on your own Outer Hebrides trip. 
Unfortunately, the ferry was cancelled that day due to high winds, which is always a possibility in the Outer Hebrides. Once it looked like the cloud and rain had cleared up from the top of Hevel, Barra's highest peak, I decided to begin the hike up. Unfortunately, the weather had other ideas and visibility went down to about five metres once I was probably three quarters of the way up. If you can hear me, I'm trying to speak into my coat because my microphone's down there. I'm trying to shield from the wind. Um, it seems to have happened again. Every time I decide to walk up a mountain, zero visibility and I end up getting lost and I sat off uh, upheaval which is 382 meters high if you wanted to know and um, I mean the weather wasn't perfect but it certainly wasn't like this it's not a tricky hill to navigate very buggy very wet probably took me half an hour to get up here but yeah finding my way down now ain't gonna be easy oh man why do I always get in a pickle on a mountain? Literally every time. <sighs> Never mind. About halfway down, I'm telling you now, there is definitely a lot of Being on a mountain, 55, 60 degree guts. Um, in certain bits that I couldn't even move, like, I was absolutely terrified, I'm not going to lie. That was scary. Uh, what I thought it was a good idea to come up here in the first place. No idea. It's not the first time either. We'll move on because I don't want to talk about what just happened. So that's what we're going to do. You join me right now from Barra Sands campsite. Now this is obviously right at the north of Barra. Uh, Elo Gary Beach is just a hop, skip and a jump uh, that way. Uh, I was hoping to walk down there, but at the minute it is literally blowing about 70 miles an hour. Um, apparently the weather may slightly improve uh, later on and it'll brighten up. If that's the case, I'm going to go down there. So I've made the short walk from the campsite and I'm down at Elo Gary Beach. And the sun's pretty low in the sky, it's probably about an hour till sunset. And this view that I've got over the beach is just... It's so special. I mean, I can see probably some of the other Outer Hebride Islands in the distance. I don't know if that's Ariske, could well be. Um, but yeah, this is a special one. I was just speaking to a lady then um, who was on the campsite last night and she stayed up to watch the Northern Lights. I'm a little bit gutted that I didn't. Um, it was a bit cloudy where I was staying and I was absolutely knackered as well. But yeah, this long sweeping beach, I think goes all the way around. You'll see behind me. Um, the lady was saying potentially for three miles, so yeah, this one's a special one. We're just round the corner from Traymore, which is back in this direction. I'm super glad I came, and boy, is it a special beach. So I am back in the camper van, Olive. Uh, final night of this mini barra trip. It's been epic. It's been eventful, the weather has been absolutely crazy and that's to be expected with the Outer Hebrides. But yeah, we'll pick it up in the morning and we'll finish this trip off good and proper. See you in the morning. I woke up the following morning and finally the winds had dropped giving me an hour or two before my flight to finally get my drone up in the air. So I headed back towards Castle Bay. <laughs> Sadly, for the last time on this trip, I'm back at Barra Airport, overlooking Traymore, and this pretty much brings this video to an end. Barra is a fantastic island, I've had such a good time here, and if you could only visit one of the Outer Hebrides islands that has a bit of everything, I think Barra is the place to come. And I always say, if you enjoy the Scottish islands, if you've enjoyed the NC500, you'll absolutely love the Outer Hebrides. It has everything that the North Coast 500 has, the beaches are better, um, it's just more wild, more rugged, and there's a lot less people. I'm here in the height of August, and pretty much every beach I've got to myself, or maybe two or three people at most, and that really is something completely unique to the Outer Hebrides. I just want to thank you all for watching and supporting the channel. It does mean a lot to me that you actually spend your own time watching these videos, even if you don't come and do an Outer Hebrides road trip. 
I still hope you've enjoyed the content. And don't forget, you can grab my new road trip out of Hebrides book, which I'm literally just finishing. I've just took some more photos down at Kissmore Castle. So thank you very much. I'm going to catch you guys very soon in the next video, which I think is going to be the Northumberland one. So I'll see you then.